Did you know, in the United States, heart disease is the leading cause of death for both men and women? That 25% of the college population alone suffers from severe ADHD, and that over 40 million adults suffer from severe anxiety disorders. Typically, doctors prescribe medication to relieve the symptoms for all three of these disorders, but due to the research in the past decade, it has been discovered that meditation can help relieve many of these symptoms. Today, I'm going to discuss with you three main points. The first one being what meditation is and a little bit of the history behind it. The second one, the various health benefits from meditation. And lastly, where to practice meditation. Okay, so what is meditation? Meditation is known as a mental exercise to engage in focus in order to achieve a higher spiritual awareness or a heightened sense of relaxation where it all began. Actually, there is a preconceived notion that it all began with Buddha, but historians have discovered that it began in prehistoric times with the cavemen. The cavemen would sit in front of the fire and stare at the flames, and it was shown to relax them. Uh, there wasn't much technique to this, but it was still considered meditation. Moving on to Buddha, Buddha was called the Enlightened One, and he was born in 623 BC and he would go around the east and preach various positive messages to people and one of the many things that he taught in his teaching was the practice of meditation and a lot of the form of meditation was developed because of buddha you can see in this picture right here his posture and the way he's sitting his eyes are closed and he's still and that's a big part of meditation that we still use in this modern day now that I've discussed a little bit of what meditation is and the history behind it, I'm going to discuss with you all a little bit of the health uh, benefits that come from meditation. So in the brain, we have various waves that go through, and beta waves are the waves that are known as agitated, alert, busy, tense, or afraid. And then there's three waves that there's three ways that go through the brain during the process of meditation. There's beta, which I just explained, that's alert, agitated, so, and then there's alpha, which is known as physically or mentally relaxed, uh, but still aware of your surroundings. And then there's theta, which is the overall goal of meditation that you want to reach at the end of your meditation process. And that's reduced consciousness, and it's just basically very relaxed. You're not drowsy, but you're just completely relaxed. And so in this picture, I found it really interesting. Uh, the picture on the left is before meditation, and the pink and the orange and the red um, picture, it shows the beta waves going through, and then it shows the picture after meditation, and most of the beta waves have gone away. Now that I've discussed the effects that it has on the brain, I'm going to discuss a couple of the medical uh, the medical processes that have been done in the studies. So there's a new program that um, has really picked up recently called the new uh, the Transcendental Medical Meditation Program. It's also known as the TM program. And actually, it started in the 1950s in India, but it took about 20 years to gain population in the state. And um, it has really helped with cardiovascular disease, which is very common. It's a heart disease. And not only has it shown to vastly reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, but it has also been proven to regress the progression of cardiovascular disease. And in the Journal of Biobehavioral Me Medicine, uh, they did a study where they took 40 people who were above the age of 60 and suffered from cardiovascular disease, and they put them, uh, they put half of them on just a normal medication for cardiovascular disease and they took the other half and they put them through the TM program. And after about three weeks of this, they hooked them up to heart monitors and um, conducted a test to see how the, their hearts were. And it showed that the people who went through the TM program, their health vastly, vastly got better compared to the people who were just on the medication but were not meditating. Okay. Meditation versus medication. Uh, many people are ADHD and it's increasing with the technology that we have in our modern world. And so researchers from the Journal of Attention Disorders 
conducted an experience. They took eight adolescents and 24 adults, and all 32 people were ADHD, and they took them to an eight-week retreat for meditation, and they did a post-review after uh, the eight weeks was up, and it said that 77% of the people felt like they did not need their medication anymore. And the reason for that is because during meditation, it requires you to focus on your breath, focus on a positive thought, focus on being in the moment, and so it really works that part of the brain that forces you to focus. Now that I've discussed with you a few of the health benefits of meditation, I would like to talk to you about where people meditate. So it is common that people like to meditate in nature, and whether that's someone's backyard, a meadow, someone's favorite park, or the beach, constantly the sounds of nature relax the person, and the booty used to meditate in the mountains. So it just depends on the person, but if you're more of an indoor person, there's Shavasana, and typically at the end of a, an hour to an hour and a half yoga practice, uh, there is something called Shavasana, and it's a guided meditation at the end of class. It's usually very relaxing because yoga studios will have incense burning or relaxing music or have it completely silent, but it's just a really relaxed setting. And actually, interestingly enough, Buddha temples, and this picture right here is a Buddha temple in Jacksonville uh, on the west side, and we have about four of them here. And it's free of charge, and the uh, the program, you can just look it up online or call, and they welcome anyone to come and practice meditation because they definitely believe in it. So in conclusion, today I explained what meditation is and a little bit of the history behind it. I listed the various health benefits of meditation, and I listed numerous places where you can practice meditation. Typically at the end of meditation, people say namaste, which is a meaning, it means and in a friendly Indian greeting or gesture of saying thank you is a sign of respect that brings people together. So I just wanted to say thank you for letting me do my speech. Namaste.